What's going on? The Yosemite Guide here coming at you from Badger Pass, also known as the Yosemite Ski and Snow Play area. Uh, we're doing a snowshoe today. I've mean, got the parking lot here, uh, fairly empty, and the mountains uh, over there. But we got our snowshoe trail starting, uh, goes up Glacier Point Road basically. We're going to check it out. So the trail starts just following Glacier Point Road up. Uh, this is a cross country skiing track. They lay down tracks here for the cross country skiers. Makes it really cool to uh, go out to Glacier Point. That's a pretty big trip there for the day. Um, but there's some other like snow camping spots as well. But this trail starts out with a gradual incline in the first half mile um, but then the rest of the trail is just kind of up and down but this is Dewey Point is one of the best snowshoeing trails in Yosemite in my opinion um, tons of meadows takes you right to the rim of the valley so you're looking down a few thousand feet uh, super cool and uh, it's only seven miles round trip and we're just about a mile in, maybe a little less than a mile in. We got Summit Meadow here, really pretty meadow on our right side. Um, you could actually head up this hill there. That'll take you to the old Glacier Point Road and it loops around back down to Badger Pass. Kind of a cool little snowshoe cross country skiing spot. But once you get to Summit Meadow, then you will look for the Dewey Point Trail on your left side coming up here shortly and this is almost always pretty well packed out this is a uh, pretty popular trail and for good reason because it's so cool and we've got our sign here for Dewey Point two and a half miles and fairly fairly easy uh, there's some up and downs um, that make it a little more difficult towards the end but Let's see what we can get into here. And just a lot of really pretty meadows opening up through here. Uh, really cool. And it's been a minute since I got to make a video. Uh, I've been kind of down the last few weeks just because I've been wanting to go hiking so bad. But I hope everyone's having a good 2024 and you're getting out on adventures of your own. But uh, I just feel super, super blessed to be out here. And enjoying enjoying nature again uh, just really cool uh, and to get to this trailhead you're gonna go uh, up Glacier Point Road which is halfway between the south gate of Yosemite and Yosemite Valley and then it's five miles up Glacier Point Road uh, to Badger Pass and that's where you'll park you can rent snowshoes at the mountain shop there if you don't have them so that's kind of a cool option. Uh, not super expensive, but I'm not sure how much they're charging these days. But um, this is one of the cooler hikes you can do right now just because there's so much limited limited hiking in the wintertime in Yosemite. So this is a cool one to throw into your trip. And you can see things are really starting to open up here. Um, we're about a less than a mile, around a mile uh, off of Glacier Point Road, getting into this, but super pretty, making good time. The trail's uh, really broken in, so it's very rare you'll have to break trail um, on this trail, just because it's so so popular and well traveled. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, it's uh, popular cross-country skiing, snowshoeing all winter long. So you will need chains or four-wheel drive uh, to get up here most, most of the winter. And driving in Yosemite, you're required to always have chains in your car at all times. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Really nice meadow here. I just think it's so cool to see these 
landscapes just in a whole new light in the winter time. Like I hiked this during the summer and this is just a whole new whole new landscape. Uh, really cool to be on the same trails and just see completely different things. So it's interesting how our perspectives change season to season. And we're still early in the year here. So we got the uh, stream still showing and uh, really cool looking as it starts to freeze over. But these will all be covered up uh, probably after this weekend. We got a decent amount of snow coming in. But it looks cool right now. And if you are having to break trail out here, uh, there are these trail markers you got there in the tree, pretty high up. And the uh, idea being is you should be able to see the next next marker from where that one is. Um, so I could see orange in the tree up here. So I know to stay along this path. And they're sometimes hard to see, especially if you're in a storm or something. So uh, I definitely recommend having a GPS on you at all times, anytime you're out here, especially solo. Uh, on these trails but yeah you see the other marker in the tree up here and you just follow these ones out now I'm getting into some more of the uh, up and down hilly stuff it's not too bad if you're on snowshoes but uh, cross-country skiing these parts here uh, could become a little bit more technical so keep that in mind if you're doing the uh, cross-country skis out here. I like to cross-country ski just because you could cover so much more ground in a short amount of time. But stuff like this, uh, snowshoes is pretty cool. So I've got about a mile to go to Dewey Point and there's a little bit of a split in the trail here, but there's good signage. Uh, you see a sign right there, it's saying Badger Pass that way. And that's a more uh, difficult trail to navigate. So we want to make sure coming back that we stick on our uh, right path. But there is signage, signage here. So we're going to keep keep following this down to Dewey Point. We should have a little less than a, a mile to go from here. We're smooth sailing. Let's see what this sign says here. <clears throat> yeah, Dewey Point, one mile. So we'll make note of this spot here and make sure we stay left uh, on the way back. And we are getting close. These views are starting to open up. Uh, there's not, not a ton of amazing views on the way out here but just really pretty hike through the forest um, definitely a fun hike to do with a friend partner whatever um, it's always fun talking to somebody walking through the woods but yeah i haven't seen anybody yet so i imagine there will probably be a few people out here because there was you know, a dozen cars at the trailhead. So I'm kind of surprised I didn't pass anybody because I kept up a pretty good pace here. But we'll see, uh, see what we got when we get out here. But these snow-capped mountains are beautiful. This is a cool spot to go snow camping if you're into that sort of thing. Um, you would need to get an overnight wilderness permit for that, but there's a cool camping spot over here uh, if you wanted to snow camp in Yosemite. And here we are, Dewey Point. Let's see what kind of kind of views we can get from the edge here.
We've got a half dome peeking out on our right side here. Tan doesn't get much better. And half dome there. The high Sierras just cut, covered in snow. Nice view of Yosemite Valley. Long way down. All right, so my official time to get out here was an hour and a half. Uh, you could probably expect about a two hour hike out here, so not too bad. Um, I'd call it moderate stress level um, just because you're snowshoeing so it's a little bit harder than regular hiking but uh, I'm all by myself out here there was a couple people out here and but right now I have the whole place to myself here's that little point I walked out on but you got to be really careful uh, getting up there when there's more snow you can't tell where the rocks are and stuff so that's not recommended easy to fall to your death up there so I would stick to this little meditation rock right here which is pretty cool but yeah we came we saw we conquered and I'm probably going to head back towards Summit Meadow before I make my lunch just because I got a big lunch so I'm gonna be pretty full I don't want to be hiking out of here on a on a full stomach but I'm excited about it. I packed it a little over a week ago, so I kind of don't remember exactly what's in there, but I remember some kind of mystery meat. Um, so it should be good. So we'll see what, see what we can get into on the way back. These clouds are looking awesome. And I made it back up to my split here in the trail. So I want to make sure I stay left and follow these signs this way. And we got two and a half miles back to Glacier Point Road from here. And just a quick safety tip, if you're ever out here and you feel like you might have lost the trail and you get a little bit scared, uh, just try and go pee behind one of these trees and definitely someone will come walking up on you. So that's a surefire way to get rescued. Uh, the more you know. And on this trail, you'll see a bunch of little split offs all over the place. You just want to stay on the one that looks the most traveled and packed. Uh, there's cross country ski tracks that way. Uh, little snowshoe path that way. Um, but you want to stay on the most packed stuff and they're all going to lead to the same spot but uh, a lot of those other tracks are going to take you into deeper snow and just make you work a lot harder so just stay on the uh, the main trail you'll be a lot happier getting into a pretty section here but something else i wanted to talk about was the uh, reservation system coming up this year for 2024 uh, reservations will be required um, pretty much all summer starting uh, the April 16th through July 1st it'll be weekends and holidays you need a reservation and then from July 1st to uh, I think the end of August probably uh, it'll be every day you'll need a reservation so that's something to start keeping in mind 
right now if you're planning your trip for this summer. Um, you'll also need reservations uh, for the three weekends in February because of the uh, the firefall event that happens off of El Capitan on Horseshoe Falls where the sun hits it perfectly, lights it up like it's on fire. So keep that in mind as well. But yeah, pretty much all summer long, you're gonna need a reservation in it. And we're coming back into the meadow here. But I think I'm just gonna push a little further and get out to uh, Summit Meadow by Glacier Point Road to make my lunch. But I am getting pretty hungry, so worked up an appetite and I'm excited about it. So everything's a little bit harder to film in the snow, but uh, for today's lunch segment, we're going corned beef hash, tostadas. I got my tostadas here. Uh, tostadas are just easier to deal with than uh, flour tortillas. But I'm gonna throw some beans in there and uh, I got some green chilies as well. And to top it all off, we got the bomb hot sauce beyond insanity. Stuff's super hot, so really good though. Um, it's like 185,000 Scoville units, but uh, it tastes hotter than that. So we're gonna top it off with that. So we'll get uh, get started here. So bringing cans on a uh, hike is not ideal just because of the weight, but I was only doing seven miles, so I figured what the heck. But uh, this stuff definitely looks and smells like dog food, but I'm hoping it tastes better than that. So we'll see, see how it goes here. We got our Alpo going in. Oh, and this doesn't look super appetizing yet. But I think I'm just gonna throw in these uh, these green chilies right now to get this flavor going. But we are gonna add some of our uh, Jacob's cattle beans here. And it's got a little more liquid than I was hoping for. But uh, I don't have cheese, but I have the next best thing, which will be our sharp cheddar megabytes cold fish. So we're gonna use these to thicken this up a little bit. Just crunch them down real good. Don't worry, I washed my hands before I left the house. Alright, we're almost ready to plate here. Looking a little more presentable. Got our tostadas set up here. Little extra cheddar love. Now this stuff, you just need like a drop or two on each tostada. And then it gets progressively hotter. All right, we have our corned beef hash and bean green chili tostadas with a little, little uh, goldfish garnish. So the corn, the corned beef, uh, the corned beef hash actually pairs pretty well with the tostada, they kind of complement each other. But that hot sauce is kicking. That's gonna warm me up real good. So these actually came together a lot. Ooh. So these actually came together a lot better than I thought they would. Um, I was worried when I opened that corned beef hash 
at first just had that really strong alpo scent to it um <clears throat> but i think the beans help calm it down but yeah the uh the corn tortilla definitely complements it it's uh i'd call it like a 6.7 uh, it's pretty good for being in the snow country here oh man those are good i think we gotta go round two here so i got such a huge helping and I cannot stress to you how careful to be with this hot sauce. It is just super kicking. I just need little, little tiny dabs. Oh, it's too big. And we got plate number two. And these have been, I don't know if it's just marinated all the flavors together, but they're tasting better as I go. This is crazy. It's almost like a like a trailer park tostada, I'd call it. Whew. All right, so I would call lunch mildly successful. It was better than I thought it was gonna be when I first started, so that's good. But I gotta be careful with that bomb hot sauce. Don't wanna spill it out here. I'll melt all this snow and be causing avalanches with that stuff. That is no joke. And I think just because it was, it's a cold out here that uh, it was hard to pour just tiny little drops. So I think I took a little more on than I'm used to, but feeling better now. And I'm definitely glad I'm only a, less than a mile back to the car, to the trailhead, because after six tostadas, I am stuffed, but we're having a good day. so. Keep it rolling. Pretty stretch here coming back towards Badger Pass. I guess I could tell you a little bit about Badger Pass. There's a ton of skiing history there. Uh, it's been around since probably the 20s or 1920s. I guess you can't say 20s anymore when you're referring to the 1920s because we're in the 20s. That's kind of weird. But <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, it's been around a long time. It is, I think, the last ski resort in California that doesn't make snow. Uh, it's a really small, small hill. A good place to learn how to ski or snowboard. I actually used to do snowboard instructing there for a while back in the day uh, when my nephews were in the uh, mountain area ski school program. So I taught a lot of kids how to snowboard. So that was fun. But uh, yeah, really cool, cool spot. To take the kids for sure all right well that about does it for this one so uh, thanks for coming along with me on my dewey point adventure ended up doing seven miles round trip snowshoeing and six tostadas but they were pretty good so had a good time and uh hopefully it's not too long before my next adventure so don't forget to like that video we'll catch you next time love you peace out <laughs>